This podcast encourages and empowers you to create your own unique real story, develop your own unique real statement, and discover your own unique real self. The power is yours. Good night, good night, Alison Donaghy. How are you doing on this wonderful, beautiful night? Oh, I am doing so good, and I'm really happy to be here with you. Yeah, it's a great pleasure to connect with you. What part of the world are you in right now? I am the west coast of Canada. All right, all right. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm in Trinidad. You were going to ask me where I'm from, did you? Yeah? I was, because, yeah. you know, I love the accent. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. It's a twin island just east of Venezuela, uh, southwest of Barbados. Oh, it's beautiful sound. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you. I love your accent as well. Yeah. Yeah, oh, thanks. <laughs> there we go. So tell us which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this specific time in history? Oh, my goodness. Um well I um I have a company called Domino Thinking where I challenge people to think about what they think about. And I have just put out a course because personal accountability is really important to me. So I'm starting on this movement called Hashtag My Part. And the course is all about how do we accept accountability for everywhere we find ourselves in our life. Because we co-create our life. It doesn't happen to us. It happens as a result of us. And when we can understand and acknowledge and respect that we've contributed to it, we can stay out of victim space and move into a freedom state. And uh, it's a much better place to live in a freedom state now everything you just said took a very high level of speaking skill to accomplish the amount of words <laughs> that you said in that breath uh, so tell us uh, do you do a show uh, do, <laughs> do you run <laughs> are you very athletic <laughs> uh, I actually have a podcast it's called the Alison Donaghy show Sweet. and I, I speak <laughs> and so I love talking <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's great. Yeah, you sound great. That's wonderful. All right. So yeah. your accountability is huge. You're helping others with that. You're a speaker, a podcast host as well. Wow. Where's the best place for someone that's listening that uh, requires that type of assistance to connect with you? Uh, my website's dominothinking.com. Yeah, explain to me the concept of domino thinking, though. Where did that come from at the point when you said, this is what this is going to be called? Mm -hmm. Well, I I was talking to a friend of mine, and we... It, when we were good friends, we talked over time, and then we were talking about naming the company, and we were doing some brainstorming, and and I just kept saying, you know, all of our thoughts create a domino effect, and we we think something, we make a choice based on that, and then all of these things happen in a response to it. And so, because I'm so big on thinking, it just turned into domino thinking, and, and I really ask people to take a moment to consider the ramifications of the choices that they're making, the beliefs that they have, and the beliefs that they don't question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with that. That's very well said. Uh, in the trip that we took across the US and Canada, we definitely experienced uh, the effects of domino thinking. Uh, mm -hmm. Not having a place to call home specifically. Uh, and again, not that the places that we were at weren't homes, but like there was a direct connection to the way we thought and what happened on any particular day. So yeah, I resonate very deeply with what you just said. Mm, yeah, when what a what insight for you to have and travel is just such a great place to learn so much about ourselves. Yeah, it's like the raw of the land, isn't it? Uh, mm. Yeah, it's the untouched. So who did you learn this ability from, this ability to speak and communicate the way you do? Um, well, yeah, life, I suppose. I started um, at university with criminology, and so I spent a lot of time talking at halfway houses and interviewing people to attend halfway houses. And then I started my house painting company, which my son is now taking over. And so I spoke to schools about the importance of trades and having a trade in your toolbox, so to speak, um, because when you have a trade, you can kind of work anywhere in the world, and there's an awful lot of freedom that comes along with that. And then 
A year ago, January, I gave a speech called My Part, where I talked about how we have to be really careful about what movements we attach ourselves to. And I talked about the Me Too movement and how, like everything else, it's a double-edged sword. There's good and there's bad. And it's important that when we align ourselves with something, we think about both sides of it, like the good and the bad. And then we can position ourselves within that movement in a way that's benefiting and we can sort of err on the side of the good part of it and try to avoid the negative part of it. And then I was talking about when I was um, sexually assaulted in high school and I, it wasn't until I understood how I co-created that experience, not to say I deserved it, not to say what he did was okay, but just to understand that the series of the choices that I made uh, led to something like that happening to me. And once I understood how I co-created that, I was able to step into not being a victim around it anymore uh, because I honored that part of me that was making choices that weren't all that great. You reframed it. Oh, mm -hmm. that's intriguing. So uh, your podcast is the conversation surrounding the domino effect only, or do you take time to express uh, how you overcome those challenges as well? It's a variety of things. I really like bringing on guests that talk about controversial issues. So I've had on uh, somebody talking about pit bulls and breaking down the myths around those. Um, I had somebody who is a professional BDSM sex master talking about that. I had a guy whose son ended up in prison and how he is working on prison reform and sort of everything in between. And then last year, after my speech, a guy reached out to me and he told me about when he was raped by his wife and I went whoa I don't think I'm really understanding the male experience all that well so I dedicated eight months of my radio show to understanding men better and to bridge that gap between men's rights and feminism so you're having a ton of fun in using the podcast <laughs> as a medium for growing and learning Oh, yeah, it's just been such an honor to talk to the people that I get to talk to so that I can expand my understanding and it allows me to be really curious about other views in the world. Hmm. Well, amazing audience, you're hearing it live from Alison Dunaghy again. <laughs> she is the radio host of the Alison Dunaghy Show and you can connect with her at dominothinking.com. Alison, let's switch gears for a moment now. Let me invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. <gasps> Lovely. <laughs> Alison, what's your earliest childhood memory? Oh my goodness, my earliest childhood memory. I think it was sitting at the kitchen table with my mom and I remember being really sad about something and so she sat down and we were eating like craft dinner or something together and we had a little budgie, like a little bird that came and sat down on my table and started eating my food and I just thought that was the best thing ever. Mm -hmm. I would have to say that was probably my earliest memory. Why do you think this memory is so clear? Uh, I don't know. I've always been really connected to my mom and having that experience with her. And then, you know, it's not every day a bird lands on your plate and eats your food. <laughs> and your mother allows it to happen. That was like the real miracle part. That's intriguing. All right. How do you, so how do you see that memory connecting to who you are today when you look at your life and uh, the... Let's not say the invasion, but definitely the way other people uh, have insight to your life. How do you see that connecting to who you are today? Mm. Oh, I think it's the experiencing the wonder of an experience. Like I love the experiences in the world that I've been able to have, be it a bird eating my craft dinner or whitewater rafting down the Zambezi. It's still that um that childlike wonder about what is going on around and then enjoying the moment and really appreciating the gift that comes with having a new experience. 
There we go. Yeah. Can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture Please. you created in my mind? I love the concept of domino thinking where <laughs> the conversation is happening between you and your mother. And that in itself creates the domino effect of uh, having that experience. And uh, with the podcast, as well as you expressed, you're doing that, right? Like you're having conversations mm-hmm. with individuals. And again, the domino effect uh, is there where other people can listen in just like a bird, you know, fly in, download on <laughs> podcast on iTunes and uh, listen in as well. So I love that imagery and how mm. that connects to who you are even today. Well, and I hadn't like listening to you talk about it, what came up for me because, you know, we sort of riff off each other when we, we hear people talk about things. But um, for me, if I had never been sad that day, I wouldn't have had that experience of sitting with my mom and I would not have had the experience of the bird. Mm. And what that tells me is it's we shouldn't be so hard on those so-called bad experiences that we have because something beautiful can come from it. Yeah, most definitely. Love that. All right, my friend, if we fast forward to when you were 12 years old, what was your favorite song? <laughs> well, I believe I told you it was The Devil Went Down to Georgia, and I was actually 10. But whenever I think back on my childhood, I always think about that song because it had a really big impact yeah. on my life. And uh, and even now when I hear it, there's always this connection to my childhood. Yeah, it's amazing. Like that song, there's a huge conversation going on there, right? Like, yeah, I was intrigued. It's the first time I heard it tonight, actually, before I got really? on here. Yeah, so, and my wife and I were listening to it, and she was very much awake looking to see how uh, the story ended. It ended really <laughs> great, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, we never really know how something's going to impact us, right? Yes. Or the lasting effect of it. Well, I, and, and even forward, right? Like how it affects those that we meet going forward so i mean look at it like how would have i had the opportunity to hear that song if you didn't experience it and then shared it so i appreciate that tremendously (laughs) yeah oh i appreciate you listening to it because i love the song (laughs) it's a great song it's a great song it reminded me of uh one of those johnny cash songs uh a boy (laughs) called sue do you know that song yeah yeah i've heard of it yeah yeah it it felt like listening to that as well all right Mm, well he's great yeah he is he is definitely great well we've arrived at our destination but before we get off of this time machine there's a small declaration form so it's yes or no we're going to move pretty quickly yeah you ready allison okay go allison have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to oh well my son's taken over my one business so yes are you married no. Do you have children other than your son? No, just the one. Do you believe in God? Oh, um, I believe in something. Do you have an inner circle of friends? I do. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No, I don't. How about three hours a week? Uh, yes. What about screen time, the phone and or the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Oh, gosh. I spend a lot of time at my desk, so I would say more. What about screen? T- what? Sorry, sorry, sorry. What about reading? <laughs> How often do you read? Uh, as often as I can, which is not often enough. All right. If you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents who you are, Alison Donaghy, what would you say that is? Oh, um, I believe in win-win. Expand on that for me, please. I believe when we enter into uh, experiences with people that there is always a way that both people can walk away from it, feeling like they matter, feeling like they had input, feeling significant. I don't believe in creating win-lose situations because in my book, that's a lose-lose. If somebody else is losing, I can't be winning. And I believe all it takes is a little bit of creativity to create a good experience for everybody involved. Love it. Alison, this was such a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with us? our amazing audience oh um i'm just launching a course called my part so i just wanted to reiterate that um you can take a quiz on my website uh to see if you over identify with a victim state or a freedom state um, which has been really great for people to give them something else to think about and mostly i just want people to know that 
you're like they're amazing like we're miracles um and and we lose sight of that we are born miracles we are worthy and then the world tells us we're not and we believe the world so my encouragement to the people listening is know that you have huge worth inside of you and the sooner you start believing in it the better your life will be love it Alison Donaghy, thank you for being on what is inspired by 12 minute convos with angel jones Thank you. You're welcome. This segment has been brought to you by Amazel Enterprise.